what's going on guys? Welcome back to Blunk Pastor Automotive and Audio. Today we're looking at speaker enclosures. The particular problem with this speaker enclosure is it was rattling really really loudly. This particular speaker enclosure is a dual ported 12 inch box. These are kind of a popular box I remember seeing around like the mid 2010s stuff like that. There's one dead giveaway with these you can't see it but they have aluminum on the ends which actually isn't any Thing, aluminum it's like some type of pot metal that's really really thin might be aluminum it's basically just like a sticker that goes on there so the problem with this one there's some weed on there what is that you can kind of see the aluminum is missing on this side but if you look at this clip right here That was the clip. It wouldn't really make any noise at, you know, a lower volume, but when you turned it up, you could hear a really, really loud rattling sound. And usually what I do is, you first off, you hope it's not the speaker, but second off, just kind of try to push against usually the front of the speaker, the baffle that actually holds the speaker in. A lot of times, because this whole piece can actually become loose and, you know, it'll start to it's gonna wobble back and forth and it's going to make a lot of noise. Also, then it's not sealed anymore, which this is a ported design. doesn't really matter too much if it's sealed. And actually, as I kind of pull on this, I can see that that's, you know, actually what is happening. So basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you a cheap, easy, but very effective way to fix that, to seal your boxes, and to bring more rigidity to them and to make them more stout. And this same procedure can pretty much be used for any speaker enclosure that you can possibly think of. All right, so people who might be playing along at home, following along, want to go get some supplies. These are pretty much just basic corner braces that you can get pretty much at any hardware store. You can get them at Hammer Barn, you can get them at Walmart, anywhere like that. Um, this is going to be one thing. Another thing, and I don't know if this is proper for running into MDF. MDF is the type of wood that uh, most speaker enclosures are made out of. I kind of like these interior construction screws. I call them drywall screws. They uh, kind of have a really aggressive thread pitch like that. Let me know down in the comments if that's proper or if I should be using something else. I like it. It works for me. Another thing we are going to be using, and I've been using this stuff for years in speakers, is Loctite Power Grab. Now, this doesn't, this is pretty much a silicone caulk, but it's also an adhesive. And what it does is it dries very hard. It doesn't dry, you know, with a little bit of a sponginess or a bounciness like normal silicone would. And then a drill, obviously. Okay, so we took the driver out. Um, yeah, I definitely got to put some better screws than what I had in there. As you can see, that's the inside. There's actually the port. It's actually a really neat design. I like it. I think that's called a transmission line. I'm not really sure. But you can see all of the seams have a nice bit of caulk on them. Uh, there's a screw somebody put in there. I don't know who it was, but it's not doing anything. Um, if you could see right here, let's see if I can yeah, you see that move out. Pretty much, when this speaker gets going, that little bit of movement in that just rattles so bad. And that's what we were hearing in that clip earlier. So really, I guess the cheapest and easiest fix at that point would be to just kind of, you could shoot some screws right through here, but then you're going to see it. So what I think I'm going to do is clean this all up, shoot some new silicone in there, or glue, whatever you want to call it, the Loctite stuff. And then what I'm going to do is take one of these... And actually from the outside, I'm going to kind of brace this on all four corners, as well as from the back, probably shoot a couple of screws right through the back into it to hold it more properly. Honestly, since I don't care about the front of it at all, it, you know, I really don't care. I think I'm going to put a couple of screws in through there too. Between all that, I think this box is actually worth keeping around for a little bit longer. Okay, so what I did, and this actually completely just about fixed it. You could pretty much just do this and then end there if you so choose. I took and put five screws 
right into the front and it's completely solid now the only thing i'm noticing is there's some screw holes everywhere and that's just going to let air leak out and even though like i said it is a ported design you still really don't want you know air leaking out all willy-nilly so what i'm going to do is i'm going to throw some compressed air in here clean out all this as much as i can and i'm going to throw some loctite on there as well but i did put the two corner braces up on the top and I think for now this will probably get me another year or two out of this box. Uh, this box is very old, like I said. So, All right, so it's not pretty, but I've got everything on this, you know, our problem area is all sealed. This is also not pretty, but I had a lot of holes to fill and stuff like that. When you're using this Loctite stuff, if you want to put it on and you actually want to take the piece back out that you used, it is possible to do it with that stuff. Where as a liquid nail situation, you know, once that stuff sticks, you know, it's pretty much, it's a done deal. That's why I really like using this. And like I said, it, it, it dries up nice and hard. But all right, I'm going to go ahead and pop this back on, hook this all back up. Definitely try to let that cure 24 to 48 hours before you use uh, your system again. That'll give it time to cure and everything. But I've been saving something very special for last. And uh, of course, we're going to go ahead and we're going to give a sound demo of this. But check this out. Ultra wide bonus. This is from 2002. It's an Alpine. I remember seeing these, and um, yeah, I got this for only $10. So we're going to sound demo it with the Alpine. All right, there we go. It doesn't look too beautiful, but please remember, guys, this is for my work truck. I'm not trying to win any beauty awards. Oh, boy, look at that. That's got a gangster lean to it now. I should probably review these power acoustics at some point. Uh, I've beaten the crap out of these for literally years, and they just keep going. All right, so we've got it all hooked up for demonstration purposes. Doesn't look the most greatest, beautifulest, doesn't look the most great. Okay, doesn't look very good, but I think it'll be all right. Like I said, this is just my work truck. I have that Nefix already queued up. Let's hear how it sounds. We'll just, yeah, give her all the onions, or most of them anyways. That sounds so much better. Uh, I don't think this amp pushes out quite as much power as the other one does. It's about 200 watts. It sounds so good. It's perfect. It sounds so much better. Yes. Thank you. 